Tell me what's going on these days at the Toy Train Depot, Philip. What's new down there? Me? (laughs) No, I've been there for eight years now. How many times do you go past the Alameda Park on White Sands? I couldn't tell you a a number. It it is repeatedly per day, it seems. Okay, exactly. What has happened is people don't stop anymore. They used to run, and I talked to some of the old timers, they used to run three trains a day over the weekend. Three trains, there's 12 seats per train, and they were running three of them all day long. Now we run one train maybe once an hour, maybe. There's days that we have nobody come in, and I know why that has happened. The reasoning behind it previously, before I got there, Mr. Koval's son ran the depot, and he would only open it when he felt like it. So nobody could know when it's open and when it's not. And so they got in the habit of not coming down because nobody ever knew when it was open. I'm trying nowadays and finally with a little bit of help from more of our people that we have there to get the word out. Hey, guys, we're open. We're here. People who used to ride the train when they were younger, people that's still here in Alamogordo, back in the the, the, uh, 90s and the early 2000s. And they said, oh, I remember coming here. We came down here and we rode the train. And he says, well, what took so long? <laughs> Since the last time. He says, oh, you know, life happens, and it does. So I'm trying to get the word out. We're open every weekend. We're here. Come down and see us. What do these train rides run these days? How, how much for a ticket? For everybody above four years old, $5 a head. Three and under, they're free. That's it. And it's a 20-minute ride, 15 to 20-minute ride. It's not quick around the loop and you're done. Mm -mm. We go all the way from, you know where the caboose is. Right. We go all the way to the zoo and back. It's three-quarters of a mile long. Takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Also, the volunteers, the people that were here before the sun drove them all off. Well, I'm trying to get some of them back, but most of them have either moved away or died. And that's unfortunate. So I've got to get the new people coming in and volunteering and helping us keep it open. There's many, many projects that we do inside the depot. When's the last time you were there? It's been many, many, many moons. Exactly. And 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 those are the same answers I get from other people. Come down, visit us. It's a nice ride. It's comfortable. Somebody else is driving. All you have to do is sit back and enjoy. Now, obviously, when it's above 90, 95 to 100, It's not real enjoyable out there with no wind. Understand that. And when it's raining, we can't run at all. But there's the other day, like today. Today would be a really nice day if we we were open. That would would be nice. So I want to get the word out that we are open and we're there. Two other things. One, I want to try to get volunteers in. Now, if I asked you to volunteer down there, you would probably say no. Because you're going to use the terms or excuse, as you want to say, that you have nothing to know about trains. Am I correct? So why do I want to volunteer at the Toy Train Depot? Actually, I would uh, tell you no, simply because I am far too busy with this radio station. Otherwise, I would love to do it, as I have operated a train once before in my youth. There you go. So what I do is against that quote excuse, but I also understand that the middle-aged people, I will say 30 to 50, they're involved in work. They don't have time to volunteer. But we, I can use, I can come up against, well, what do you do on the weekends? That's the days we're open. And, and, I, I, understand and I will tell you, I, I'm probably still working. <laughs> and, bro, and I understand that. I see, yeah, I'm not in the office those two days, but that doesn't mean I'm not working, right? So I'm looking for people, for volunteers that have, you know what a photographic eye is? People that can take photographs and see the detail and how to photograph gets together. I'm familiar, yes. There's people like that. Those are the people I want to get. They don't have to know about trains. Trains, I can teach them. Detail people, I can't teach. They already know how to do detail. I can teach you how that applies to railway roading. That part I can do. It's getting them in there to get to do that work. That's the work we need done from our volunteers. The thing I really stress with a volunteer is, if you only have one hour a weekend, a month, I will take that one hour, no matter what day you want to do it. 
I am not going to set a schedule for that. Other than that, please come in when we're open. That's it. Come in for an hour. Thank you very much for coming, doing whatever you can, and go about your other businesses that you might have going on. If you can spend two hours, hey, that's a bonus. Three hours, four hours, whatever you want to do. And you have the freedom of doing what you like to do. I'm not going to force you to do something that you may marginally like to do. I want you to be happy there. It's the way I treat my volunteers. I'm sort of classified as a pseudo head of the volunteers. Well, makes sense to me. And Philip, I'll tell you, operating any type of amusement yes. is just another extension of being in the entertainment business, which I've been doing Correct. for 30-something years, 35 years. So I understand the exactly. idea of making people happy. And there yes. is no feeling like it in the world. You uh, No. When, when you get that smile at the end, the laugh, the thank yes. you, you cannot put a price on that. So I encourage people that huh. are interested. Philip, if someone wants to find out how to become a train operator, how do they get a hold of you, and what do they need to bring when they talk to you? Their brain. <laughs> the number for the Toy Train Depot is 575-437-2855. Again, that's 575-437-2855. And they can ask for me. There's a couple other people that you could ask for, but they'll probably hand the phone to me, which, which I don't mind. The third thing I'd like to cover then is that we are going to be at the Flickinger Center on the 17th of August. They're having a heritage celebration, and we will be there. They're going to have dancing, food trucks, and vendors, and we're going to be one of the vendors. All right, Philip, before I let you go, is there anything else you want yeah. to share? Come ride the train, please. <laughs> Come ride the train. That's pretty straightforward. Come ride the train. We do have a museum there. I didn't even get into that part, but we, they can come in when they get their tickets for the train. We can talk about the museum also. We have a very unique museum there. I have had people from all across the United States and the world come in, and I ask people, how do we compare to other museums? You're very unique in the fact that we run six different sizes of trains inside the museum. Most museums run one size, and it may or may not be running the day they go in. When they go in, we try to run all six of them. That's why we need more volunteers, so we can keep all of those trains running. Well, and they go. get a history lesson about trains. They get to see a variety of types of trains, not only here in the United States. I also have some English trains, so we talk about all kinds of that. The tour takes roughly about 45 minutes to an hour, more if they keep asking questions and we encourage that, and that is also $5 a head. Excuse me, we're running a special. For a family, it's $10 for the whole family. So family of four, $10 for the museum. 